How's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask Hat Podcast on YouTube. Oh man, I've been waiting to get a copy of this book for quite a while. This is the weird world of eerie publications, comic gore that warped millions of young minds by Mike Howlett. Introduction by Stephen Bissett of Swamp Thing fame and Taboo and all kinds of stuff. Great, great artists. 1963, Stephen Bissett. If you're watching this channel, you should know who Stephen Bissett is. More like a Mike Howlett should be known, but he's not. What this is, okay, back in the day, this is a book covering eerie publications, not the eerie comic magazine that Warren put out. Go ahead and get that out there. Back in the 60s and 70s, I think these started in the 60s. I know Skywall did. You had three companies producing black and white, magazine size horror comics. The comic code, you know, was keeping horror kind of down. Well, magazine size wasn't, didn't follow the comic code authority rules. Do whatever you want. Heavy Metal would come out was doing great. Uh, you know, Warren started off, you had know, Creepy and Eerie and the Vampire, and those are the best known. Then you had Skywall, which had like Psycho and a couple other good ones. Those are getting better now now. Then you had Eerie Publications. Tales of Voodoo and stuff like this. And they were, this will come off as mean, and I don't mean this as mean. They were the Charlton to Warren and Skywall's Marvel and DC. And I like Charlton, but these were the lower budgeted ones. You know, a lot of their shit was... Really cool, gory-ass covers. Most of the stories in there were reprints from old pre-code public domain horror stuff, or sometimes they'd redraw the stories from back then. And what it is, Mike Howlett loved these things for some reason. Inside, so he's going to do a big-ass book. Oh, look at the fucking size of this book. This is a big-ass hardcover book. Look at that. And, you know, it's an ex-library book. I've got to get the rest of that off. It's got a little thing up here. But and what, and since When it came out, I just... I didn't have the money at the time, then it sold out and was out of print. I'm like, fuck, you know, that's a $40 book, which for a book this size, hardcover is not horrible. I paid a lot more for books that were smaller than that, but I got lucky. I got this just recently as of recording for my birthday for a friend who found it at their library from when I was told. So they got it for like three, what's a hardcover book at a library now, like three bucks? And that's only, it's the next library. Let's check this shit out. We got a, you know, black inside pages. That's an eagle touch. Now, this, well, I'm sorry. I do have a little bit of damage here. Some of the corners are a little janky, but for the price, I mean, it's free. <sighs> Feral House. Company put this out. Excuse me. And this came out 2010. So this is, as of recording, nine years ago. Weird shit. A Contagious Confession. This is Stephen Biss that talking about how he bought the fucking um, eerie stuff and loved it and did not realize until years later it was like I said, you know, it was 35 cents and 65. 35 cents. That's a lot of money because back then, 65, 35 cents, comics were what? 10 cents? That would have been three comics and then tax for one magazine. And a lot of it, you know, was just reprinted golden age public domains but there was original stuff in here too that's the cool thing about it. i didn't know a lot about eerie now if you go out looking and how i found out about eerie let me go on that real quick my little history with them I hadn't really heard of them i'm on the i don't remember if it was dvd maniacs back then or av maniacs one of the names came first i think it was dvd and it became av maniacs it was a review site they got sent screeners they had a lot of people working their review and then they covered like horror, sci-fi, cult movies, porn, you know, just not the mainstream shit. Well, they had this really cool, I'll just zoom in on that art for now. They had this, you know, really cool forum there, and Video Asia, a company that put out, like, the Grindhouse Experience sets and shit like that. They do a lot of, like, VHS tape rips and stuff that is either public domain or whoever owns the rights is not going to bother coming after you for bootlegging their shit. So they put out these sets. One of them was called Tales of Voodoo and had the covers from the eerie shit. I'm like, oh my God, those covers are amazing. Even though you get a disc with two films and they're like straight, you know, like Greek VHS rips of you know, some shitty movies. But the covers were gorgeous. So I bought one of them because I got it really cheap and kind of wanted to know more about eerie. Mike Howlett posted that forum, started talking about this book. And since this book has been published, a good chunk of the eerie stuff has been found and scanned because these have never been reprinted as far as I know. And they're kind of hard to come by now. They're actually going for big money because they're really hard to come by. I'm never, I have seen you know, plenty of Warren shit in comic shops, conventions, antique stores even. I've seen you know, some Skywall stuff. Not a lot, but some. Eerie publications? I've never seen any of this shit in person, ever. And I've been going to conventions, comic shops for, well, as of filming right now, almost 40 years. <laughs> Real close to 40 years. I started hitting that kind of shit when I was real young. 
had an uncle take me to comic shops. Well, that's how I got into Erie, thanks to that. And I've you know, been one of the books. And I do have the scans are out there of a lot of this Erie stuff to read. I've just never read it. It's weird. I want to read the shit forever, find scans, throw it on like my tablet or my laptop to read it on there, and then I just never get around to reading it. Look at this. It's just really, and there's a lot of good information. Like I said, it's just a look at the, I love this. Free bonus, a weird horror mask. Cut along dotted lines, punch through holes, and attach elastic. Attach elastic. Look at that, the fucking detail on this shit. That is just badass. Satan's dead demons. Art by Alberto Meccagino. Then we have Weird. Okay, this is for by Mike Howlett. This is Weird, um, Volume 3, Issue 2 from 1969. Chick Stone cover. I know the name Chick Stone cover, but look at that. Look at what I'm saying. And like the, the Tales from Voodoo and shit like that, the DVDs I was talking about, they would just change this right here and have the names of the movies and, you know, have that up there. The Witch's Coven. And that's, that's another thing I'm glad is finally coming out. Back when I was you know, getting into comics, you know, and this was, you know, getting into fans, this would be like from about 84 to, hell, it'd probably be about 2000 and something, like 2003, 4. The prevailing wisdom was pre-code horror, read the EC, skip everything else. Everything else was trash, it was horrible, it was cheap jack shit, bad art, bad story. I'm speaking of EC, Tales from the Crypt, issue 24, Vault of Horror, the issue... 30, Haunt of Fear, issue 17. That's not true. There was some really good horror that came out from these companies at public domain now. As a matter of fact, I got a buddy who, if you go back through here and you look at um, Chamber of Chelsea, this is stuff, like, I've read this, Web of Mystery. This is all the precursor. This shit's all public domain, easy to find for legal, free download. And it's actually some of really good. Look at this artwork on this, man. Fucking detail in that shit. These are just some amazing, I mean, as a kid, I would have loved seeing these covers. Oh, God. Even if the insides were never as good, I would have been happy just because of the covers. Famous Monsters film. This is like a little history of horror comics. There's Creepy. Is that number one? Yes. Second issue. Beware. Look at that shit. Sincerest Form of Flattery, Chapter 2. Myron Foss. When all is said and done, Myron Foss stands as one of the most successful independent publishers in history. His ability to spot a trend and capitalize on it quickly and inexpensively made him a rich man. The road to Erie Publications is paved with Foss's smart tenacity and never letting morals get in the way of a good publication. That's a history of the Iger Studio who provided some art. And I, I am so happy now that you got a lot of these really high-end companies doing, you know, reprints of this public domain shit and nice hardcovers. And they're they're not cheap. I mean, most of them I've seen have been 35 to 45 bucks for a hardcover, like five or six issues reprinted in there. But for 35 to 45 bucks, most of that shit, you won't even get a reader copy of one of those comics. That's what you got. And this is a nice hardcover. It's gonna look really nice on the shelf. It ain't gonna fall apart. Beware. Beware has some really badass covers. Um, Foss's self-portrait of a horror artist, Warrior's Nightmare. Adventures in one of the dark mysteries. Is that another one of Foss's covers? Lunatico. I want to read some Lunatico. They talk about it a little bit here. Masterpieces are on cheap paper. And that's kind of like um, a mad imitator. Lunatico. The birth of the loony bird. Look, he's reading mad and sick and all those. Lunatico. Uh, Tom Smith. If you're watching this, do you know anything about Lunatic? I know you're like a horror magazine aficionado. I'm like, Oogle! Girly mags from the what, 60s, I would guess. Oh, 50s, okay. I think you, could, you had to like, you know, couldn't show shit. True problems. Monster Parade. <laughs> True or false. Weird Mysteries, Eerie Shock Tale. That is just a badass cover. Recycled suit, and they show you know, the star work they reuse. Suspense, don't miss 930 appointment for Mr. Hyde. Thriller, that's number one from 62. Dave Clark 5, look, look quick. I love this, this caption. The poor dear, her eyes are crossed. <laughs> it just cracks me up, I don't know why. And like the, the mad, you know, the fucking, what is that? The National Mirror Jaguar Pit 
15 secrets, 15 and matured, why I married an old man, any boy, any time. Oh, this old sleazy shit, you don't see it anymore. It's been taken over by just horrible celebrity gossip mags that are boring as fuck. Like Us Weekly and fucking National Enquirer and all that shit. Weird, look at this cover. Weird, volume one, number 10, which is the first issue. And it's the beginning of the Eerie Era. Bring on the pubs. Eerie. Weird number. You're talking about how most, most of them never started with volume one, issue one. And part of that is, and I've heard this theory before, a lot of these older companies would do this. Newsstand, back then, the way it worked, from my understanding, is they could refuse them all. I've never heard I don't want it. So by making it look like it was the sixth or seventh issue of a series, back then, you know, most of your comics came out like every two months. So a sixth issue, hey, this has been out for a year. It must be doing good. I'll take a couple copies. Ajax Feral Publishing. Any of these old horror comics catching your eye here, go to uh, digitalcomicsmuseum.com, I think is the actual URL. They have all this shit scanned in, nice copies, all the public domain shit. And there's also Comics Plus, which I think you spell out the word plus in that, not the sign. They have all this stuff. Look at this fucking cover. Told a new chilling picto fiction, Tales of Shock, Terror, Suspense. Count Dracula! Featuring a ghoul for a day, horror in the mind, gruesome garden, plus other ghoulish tales from the lower depths. Tales from voodoo. Tales from the crypt. Hmm. <laughs> See how gory this shit is, man? I would have ate this. I mean, this, these are ones I would have loved as a kid. My mom would have been like, uh-uh. And covers would instantly made her take these away when I was young. Terror Tales. It was another series they did. DVDs. I actually want to get all those just for the fucking covers. Flooding the market with blood. And it happened. The market got flooded. Horror Tales. Tales from the Tomb. The Bloody Stream. Witches Tales. I remember that cover too. I mean, that, uh, yeah, that cover. And there's, uh, let's see, the original. And the recolor. The redo. Look, 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 look. look that. Rip cheek. And so it says, Ezra Jackson never met an Ajax comic panel that he couldn't turn to a bloodthirsty masterpiece. Please note the prevalence of ripped cheeks. Man, these are just. I would love to have a book this size that's just all these covers. Each cover's like a page to itself. Just to be able to. Oh. Well of Horror, I want this fucker. This is issue three, or Buddy Wright's in cover. Only reason I knew about this is there's a book. What the? It was like the Mammoth Book of Horror Comics. Yeah, it's from the Mammoth Book. I think for says Mammoth Book of Horror Comics. They reprint a lot of pre-code shit, you know, public domain shit. But they reprint a couple of stories from this. This looks badass. I've never heard of this magazine. It's from '70. It's like early ass Bernie Wright's and shit. Burgos art. Burgos. Carlos Burgos created the original Human Torch from the Golden Age. Tales of Voodoo, the devil, zombie, demons, and vampires. And he did a lot of work for Eerie. Publications, Terror Tales, featuring the zombies, vault, witches, and ghosts, plus other terror-packed stories that shock. Professor Vampire, the world's only vampire magician. And they're never, you look at these, they're never, uh, like, stunning, super, stu super amazing art, but it's fucking badass, like, Look at this one. This is Psycho number one from Skywald. Brendan Lynch did that cover. Look at that cover. And then we got a Weird Volume 4, 6, and Terror Tales Volume 3, number one. The weird one is a cut and paste repaint by Burgos. And Bill Alexander did that cover. That's a just really cool shit. Weird Worlds. Cutting corners and pasting them. You know how they start doing a lot of reprint shit. There's even talking here, and I don't, that's where I am in the book. Let's see the covers reprint. I remember I remember that cover. Witches Tales. Tale. I love this uh Boris Karloff mummy cover. Those are both badass, man. Crime does not pay. Look, he's choking a bitch. Jimmy Snooker gotta choke a bitch. Then it got redone as Terror Tales. Aye, before somebody bitches about the Jimmy Snooker thing. That is an inside joke. There was back in like 2007, 8, probably 8. With WWE Heritage, whatever stuff was coming out then, they had Legends cards in them. I'm just going to be showing some more while I'm talking. And there was a Jimmy Snooker one where Jimmy Snooker's hands were like this, both hands were like that. 
and it looks like he's choking somebody, an imaginary person. Well, I had a buddy of mine who I was sending him, we were tape trading back then. In 2007, eight, we were still tape trading. But I was sending him some tapes, I threw in some jokes. Some of the extra of these WWE cards I had with captions added to me. He just introduced me, there's a website, I don't know if it's still called like Baseball Card Vandals. And they take common, dirt common baseball cards and do goofy shit to them. Well, I sent him one, and it was after, um, um, this is when the Rick James had to choke a bitch. It was real popular, that joke on uh, Spell Show. So I sent him one, it was Jimmy Snookum, and said, does Snook have to choke a bitch? And he's still got, I think he actually has it hanging on his wall, he told me. Look, this is a Tales from Voodoo cover. From volume two, number four, September 1969. Now look at that cover. And this is volume four, number six of Terror Tales, October 72. And look, it's just a repaint. And it looks horrible. Oh man, that witch's, co witch's tail cover. That is badass. And let's talk about Skywald in here. Tales of the Zombie. I've read a bunch of these. Marvel's reprinted those. Those are actually really good. Weird. Look at that fucking spike going through him. The decline of eerie civilization. While you're you were reading their gruesome horror comics, Countrywide and the same of the company actually did the eerie publication. Let's put out these tiles here in the same office. John, will we remember you, John F. Kennedy? Dogs, a magazine for everyone who enjoys them. Cycle, stud, cute little girl there. Children's Projects of Christmas, Masters of Self Defense, True Romantic Confessions, Man on the Moon, Countrywide Sports. A little headband and shit. Oh, too cute. Let's don't get personal. And this is talking about how with the Warren Group, they communicate with the fans. They had letters. Skywall did the same. They had surveys. <laughs> Eerie's just like, fuck it. They never printed letters. You know, they did this stuff as cheap as they could. Oh, man, look at that. Just, oh, the art. That is... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Weird Tales of the Macabre. Atlas Seaboard's excellent but poorly timed with Tales of Macabre number two. Art by Boris Vallejo. His third time really showing They did some of these covers three fucking times. Mm. No, actually, on um, both of these, the second cover is probably my favorite. Terror from the Tomb. Man. Even like a trading card set that just reprints these covers would be badass. You know, I'm like, Nixon Cockeyed, the greatest magazine ever published. Dick to play Kojak, Telly Out, the most shocking pictures of Pat ever published. Personal pics of Dick and Pat at play, the intimate relation of Golden Dr. Kissinger, Life in the Fast Lane. Life in the Fast Lane. I want this, this demon is a hag. Oh, it's an Australian publication of one of the, Victim of the Vampire. Jaws of Death Part 2. Special edition sea monster. Rod Power! <laughs> the only woman Elvis ever loved was his mama. Swine Flu from 1976. It's been around that long. Credit where credit isn't due. <laughs> this is a badass cover of weird. Look at this. God damn. I know I'm just saying that constantly. Look at this fucking art. But so, uh, this one. This cover got reappropriated for a variant cover from um, Verotic Comics. It was uh, Tales of the Inquisitor or something like that. Yeah, they reappropriated the cover. And it's also on one of those um, Video Asia <laughs> releases. I don't think it's called Vampire Tales, but. Weird. Terror of Dracula. Classic horror tales. Terror tales. Weird Vampire Tales. Bitches with tails. Nope, they didn't have a title. That's probably some weird. Probably, if they had that, they would have been the start of the furries. Bitches with tails. Dracula classic. Eerie one shots. Adventure Dracula. This, hey, Kong. Cody LL, the most famous monster of all time from 1976. Something to look for at Godzilla Con, buddy. G Con. G Fest. I'm recording this before G Fest. I told you how long ago this has been recorded when it goes up, but yeah. Cody, uh, we comments on these constantly. Is going to G Fest for the second year in a row. Hope you have a blast, man. Can't wait to hear about it. Frankenstein Classic and Screen Monsters. Crime does not pay. Look at this shit. Boom! The eyeball flying out. Eerie crime. Man. Ah, fuck. I want every one of these fucking covers. God damn, this shit is amazing. Vice Squad Detective. That looks like old Dirty Dale Roy, man. What the fuck? Murder Squad. This dude's like, ah, yeah. Mobs and gangs. 
genital mutilation by mafioso hitmen censored by the police. The worst rackets of organized crime. She is forced to be the Don slave. Drug dealing motorcycle gang keeps female slave. UFO magazine. Whatever happened to? I'm talking about the different ones. There's a Sherlock Holmes. That's not really nice. They had. This is the one that kind of. Okay. It says left. Punk rock special. No, that's Kiss. This is a cool cover. That is not a punk rock special. That's a Kiss special. Clones? Jaws of horror. Starboard. Rump! Doing the rump. Oh, sexy, sexy. When you gotta take a dump, put your rump in motion. Street trucking. <laughs> True life. No more machine gun in USA. Gun pro, new gun laws. Did the NRA bungle it? Handguns can be next. What is that from? 87. Okay, okay. I was around by then. Creepy resurrection issue. This is 146. Is um. Okay, that is. And then this is the Vampirella when Harris took over those titles. Vampire. I love Vampirella. King. Oh shit. Fucking Stacy Dash. Um. Best known as playing was it Cher and Clueless. I know her best for Mendel's Man because I've seen Mendel's Man playing a bunch of times she's in that. Great little actress, great comedic timing, and just gorgeous. And the woman's she's in her 50s now, still looks amazing. Okay, these are, excuse me, these are the eerie shit that got published overseas. All right, some of the magazines were called Terra Jacula, Terra La Moulin Madit, Jacula, Jacula. Delirium, that is a badass cover. It looks like that one with the skull, but they just moved the dagger, moved the knife. Raptus. Terror Tales from the, oh man. Does this mention them? Oh, here we go, here we go. Proven. That good ideas never die. Pubs artwork again surfaced after more than 20 years of dormancy. Video Asia lifted not only the eerie pubs artwork for the cover of their unlicensed DVD, but even used the titles and logos. Their Tales of Voodoo and Terror Tales line of double feature DVDs sported some well loved eerie publication covers as well as some interior panels that were used as spot illustrations. The jackets look awesome too. The covers are pumped up and very eye catching. While researching the book, I did my heart a good. A lot of good to walk in my local DVD store and admire some Bill Alexander art that was created 30 years ago. The last title to be issued in the series before Video Asia's Video Asia distributor Ventura Distributing went under Terror Tales Volume 4 even util, utilized the old pub standby pay stubs. This, is, this disc contains a would-be exploitation, black exploitation double feature. So Video Asia's art department took the cover to Horror Tales Volume 4, number 1. January 72, and pasted African American figures over the ones from the original cover, going as far as to put some bling on the zombie's wrist and blunt between his fingers. No, good ideas never die. And there it is. That's the ones off Vampiro. The Russell Vampiro. And this is just about everybody who worked there. Weird. Carlos Burke. So there's this human torch shit. Mystic, and he did a lot of stuff. Great West. And as you can see, I'm not even, I'm barely halfway through this book. This is going to be a long video. I'm sorry for the length of it. Oh, I love this. Come back, karate. Kick him in the wing wing. Kick him in the ding ding. Hey. You think I'm joking? A well placed kick to the ding ding take anybody down almost. That is bad. There's so much just fucking amazing art in these. Chick Stone. Bill Alexander, look at that, oh, some record labels, and then Bill Alexander did like some porn novel covers, and like this one, Humans Who Lust for Animals, mm-hmm, yeah, hey, you gotta make your money, man, draw the cover, you didn't write it, you just drew the cover, and the cover wasn't that horrible, Dick Ayers, and this is the neat thing. They're Dick Ayers and Dan Atkins. Dan Atkins, I never would have known of except for the Comic Geek Suite podcast because Dan Atkins is like from their local area. So he was mentioned a lot on there. But Dick Ayers, I've learned about through that. Walter Cassidy. Antonio Reynoso. Oscar Stepanovich. Look at that. Fucking, that's Avengers. I uh, can't remember the issue now. Super Amigos. That's a badass cover. Is that a cover, actually? 
Yeah, it's a pulp cover. Okay. Terror Tales. Man. It'd be kind of, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Six million dollar man cover. It'd be kind of neat to see my take. Either get the rights or just take all the shit that they did not, you know, as public domain and color it and release it that way. You know, let's make it in touch with whoever owns the rights. Let's get this shit back up. Extra Scorpio. Scream. I'm waiting for, because I know it's in here. I'm already past the part where I've read to. But I know there's something in here I want to show. Besides all this really cool art. Secret romance from Charlton. Speaking of Charlton, <laughs> up in Charlton. The Evil Idol. That is a cool piece of art. Snake Pit without Slash. Then we got some more covers. I've not seen the Tales from Voodoo cover for the one Video Asia one I have. I think they're all the covers are reprinted in here though. I think they reprint most of the covers in this book. So I it's probably in here, I just didn't catch it. That's it. That's um, Tales of Voodoo Volume 6, number one. That is the one that's on the one I got. And it's Ghost Ninja and the Primitives. And the thing about it is that, that Primitives, that's the only DVD release there is of that. It's like a cannibal film and it's a Greek VHS they ripped. Ghost Ninja is one of those um, Godfrey Ho cut and paste films where he took a bunch of, sometimes films never even finished and just cut and pasted in new footage and finished them. I figured that would be him, yeah. It's fucking hot today. Hey, y'all. It is July. About the middle of July, and I got my air going, as you probably hear. I got fans going. God damn, it's hard. And it is hot. Hybrid horror. So what happened is Dick Ayers got in touch with the guy, and he had the author, and he had Dick Ayers, he appeared for Dick Ayers, to do one, two, three, four, five, six pages. Basically, it's an old public domain story of Dick Ayers redraws. So that is kick-ass. It's the only place you can get that. And they got the appendixes. The Sword History of Captain Marvel. Yes, there's three Captain Marvels. Well, technically there's kind of four. You got the one that's now known as Shazam. You know, Fawcett Carriation. Then you have this one. This is the Captain Marvel that Foss put out. And he's a robot that can split off his limbs and shoot him around. Then, of course, you have Captain Marvel, Marvel, the uh, Kree, the pink skinned Kree who died in the early 80s. And then you got Carol Danvers, who is now Captain Marvel. There's some Captain Marvel. See, there's a Jumbo Henry. Jumbo size Henry. Some more Henry. Strange Unknown. The Thing and the Cellar. Periodan covers. I've always heard about Periodan, but I've never actually read any of it. Please draw from me, Argentina. Startling Mystery Stories. Magazine of Horror. And then, like, just showing all the stories they reprinted a bunch of you. Know, to every publication posters, yes, there's fucking posters of some of these covers, and I would love to have just one. Any of them. They're all amazing. Then, of course, we got Ajax Farrell. Let's tell you where the stories are reprinted from. And we are almost, we are done. Yes. That is fucking the weird world of eerie publications. I fucking love this. It's, oh, this is another one of them great art books, you know. Eventually my living room table is going to be full of art books like this, you know. Fuck your copies of Collier's or, you know, your Time Life books. I'm going to have fucking eerie publications on my, co my coffee table. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. I had a blast looking through this, even though I'm sweating my ass off right now. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.